have all heard that AI will define our future. But have you stopped to wonder what this really means? AI, or artificial intelligence, leverages computers and machines in an effort to mimic the ability that our human minds have as we make decisions and solve problems. On the one hand, we have those who are worried that AI-driven robots will become so independent and powerful that they could be out of our control. Some worry that AI would replace humans in most jobs. But then we have those who are instead excited for the prospect of leveraging AI as we boost the abilities that our human minds have when we develop smart cities, more efficient industries, and a more sustainable future. So many potential upsides and downsides, that's AI. I believe AI is useful, but potentially dangerous. It is essential, but it could be addictive. It is limitless in possibilities, yet somewhat unpredictable. To me, that's AI. The truth is that AI is more a question about how to correctly balance the promise of its power with the risk of its reckless use. And it's up to us, you know. We get to define what AI does and what it will do. We must realize that AI is constantly changing and we get to shape it. Because purely traditional AI will not be enough to target and address all of the challenges in our society. We must reshape it constantly, adapt it to new challenges and situations. Let me give you an example. AI is used in Google's web search as we rank results. It is present in social media to give us very on-point recommendations for our interests. AI is also present in a lot of the breakthroughs that we see for treatment and diagnosis of diseases. But what is the common denominator in all of these examples? AI is leveraging big data, which means large, very large amounts of data. Data that comes from the billions of likes that we give on social media, millions of entries to customer databases, credit card transactions, medical records throughout the world. The truth is that we're constantly generating data, data that AI can use to identify patterns and make predictions on our interest and behavior. So yes, we have probably all heard that AI typically requires quality data, structured data, most definitely big data. But have you stopped to wonder what happens if AI doesn't have a lot of data? Is that the limit? I don't think so. Or at the very least, I refuse to think so. Someone must reshape it, adapt it, and how? by rethinking the way that AI works to ensure that we are leveraging all of the resources and data that we have available in the most efficient way. This is actually a very real problem in the chemical industry. The chemical industry makes pretty much everything you see around you today. All the way from the components in your phones and computers, the materials for the chairs that you're sitting on today, to the clothes we're all wearing, and so much more. But how do we make all of these chemicals. We have a scientist who needs to come up with a process to transform raw materials into all of these useful chemicals. They need to figure out what is the right temperature, concentration, pressure, and other conditions to make each of these chemicals in the most efficient and sustainable way. Now let's say that the scientist has to optimize 10 different variables. That actually means that they have about 10 billion potential combinations of those variables that could be tested if we wanted to find that true optimal solution. Testing one of these potential options means doing a chemical experiment, an experiment that can take hours, days, sometimes even weeks. So I ask you, who has the time, the money, or the energy to try 10 billion times and figure out the optimal conditions to make every single new chemical that we see around us. It doesn't sound doable or logical, does it? 
Well, this is exactly where AI comes in. What if we could use AI to significantly reduce the number of experiments that we have to run? And then we use that little data to predict in a matter of seconds what the optimal solution is. It's a no-brainer, really. We need this to work. But how do we predict the behavior of a chemical reaction doing only 10 to 20 experiments? How do we run AI with only 10 data points? Most people instantly think it's not possible. AI, and more specifically machine learning, is designed to identify patterns in data. And for that, we need big data, right? So 10 to 20 points, that's nothing. However, there is an approach that is called Bayesian optimization. Let's break it down. Bayesian optimization is an approach designed to help machine learning work with small data sets. What it does is ensure that every experiment we run is selected in a smart way. So the way that it works is that we first run a few experiments. We collect a little bit of data. And then we use AI to make a prediction of how the system is behaving. Because we have little data, that prediction might be inaccurate. So Bayesian optimization adds an additional step in which we also use AI to predict what are the next best experiments that we can run to provide the crucial information that is needed for an accurate prediction. It becomes an iterative process. And then we get to an accurate prediction as quickly as possible because on every iteration, we're not adding any type of data. We're adding the best data that we can have. It's a smart data. I think the minds behind this approach are truly brilliant, and I admire them. Unfortunately, on its own, this is still not quite enough to help us develop new chemicals as efficiently as we need to. We need a little bit more data. So that is exactly what I worked on. I kept thinking, all right, we don't have enough data, but there must be a way that we can make up for it. And there is. We can leverage the knowledge that we have in other fields like chemical engineering and physics, and then use that knowledge to make up for the lack of data, enhance traditional AI, and make it as efficient as we need to, even if we have very little data points. I started thinking about how to do this back in 2020. And almost two years later, I'm the CEO of Synthetics, where we are commercializing AI algorithms that accelerate innovation and sustainability in the chemical industry using small data. We have developed a web application that democratizes the use of AI in chemical research. I don't know who here works or studies in a science-related field, but next time you go in the lab, next time you have to come up with a new synthetic route, a new material, a new chemical you want to make, you can leverage this type of technology to be your AI partner in the lab. You only need to upload an Excel file with information from a few experiments, and then with one click, the AI will guide your experiments, tell you where the optimal conditions are, how your reaction is behaving, and much more. And this is a technology that has been piloted by research groups and companies throughout the country, showing that we can develop new chemicals, processes, and materials in 20% of the time. And what does that mean? First, it means that we're building an industry that is five times faster at developing new chemicals, materials, medicine. That means we're five times faster at figuring out how to make the chemicals that we need for a new vaccine, for a better adhesive, for a more sustainable plastic, and so on. Second, developing chemical processes in 20% of the time means that we are reducing development waste, emissions, and cost by 80%. And third, it means that we can reach unprecedented process efficiencies. If we rely on trial and error to find the optimal conditions out of billions of possibilities, we're going to be relying on human intuition, human understanding, and quite frankly, a bit of luck. Instead, if we can leverage AI to identify all of those trends and patterns that we might be missing, then we have a chance at reaching those true highest efficiencies. What happens when we develop a more efficient process? We waste less energy in the transformation and avoid CO2 emissions. 
So if we implement this technology throughout the industry, we can save hundreds of millions of CO2 per year. So why does this technology work when most people think that it shouldn't? It works because we leverage the gap that existed between chemical engineering and AI. It works because AI held incredible promise, but it had to be adapted to our field. And this is only one example. Think about the limitations of AI in other fields. Are they limitations in AI? Or are they limitations in our thinking? There is, for example, the case of self-driving vehicles. Purely traditional, data-driven AI is not enough to handle the complex threat of shapes with varying sizes that are coming in and out of the way, the unpredictable behavior of drivers just like me. So what do we do? We have scientists, teams of scientists coming together with powerful sensor-based systems that have cameras, radars, so many more technologies to make sure that we collect all of the data that we need to ensure the well-being of passengers. Let's not settle for the traditional use and limitations of AI. Whenever the conditions do not seem ideal, then we rethink the way that AI works to ensure that we use the data and the resources that we have available in the most efficient way. Let's not conclude too early that we have understood the limits of AI. Let's keep growing, thoughtfully, smartly, consciously. But let's keep growing. Remember that AI is more of logic than it is of magic and has a potential of so much good it is up to us to shape it wisely. So I ask you, is AI the revolution or are we meant to revolutionize AI? Thank you.